Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker, and tonight we're going to be talking about why women lose interest the moment that you show interest in them. Um, recently, I got roasted by a couple of other YouTubers, bigger channels. Uh, one had 300,000 subs and another had like 500,000 subs. And I said, hey, that's great. I'm getting roasted by the big dogs. Always nice to know that you're making a dent in the world. Even if it is haters, that's still a good thing. And you know what? I don't mind people having their own opinions of me. If you're going to put yourself out there, sometimes you're going to get a little bit of hate for it. But something that <clears throat> was mentioned is, is something that comes up a lot on our type of channels is why do we talk about women so much? If you're going your own way or you're not dating anymore or you're just kind of doing your own path, why do we talk about women so much? Well, first of all, I actually, um, I, I did a poll. I don't have those numbers. I'm going to do a video on it, actually. Um, I did a poll and a lot of you, like 20% of you said, hey, I'm like, I'm, let me actually, let me pause here for just a second. I'll cut this part out. Let me pull up my statistics here. Sorry for all that, but I do want to pull this poll data up because I think it's important because a lot of times uh, people say, well, you guys are talk about not dating, but why do you, uh, why do you talk about women so much? Um, why do, why do people talk about the opposing party in politics a lot of times? Um, you know, people that dislike Biden, they, they, they talk about it. People that dislike Trump, they talk about it. People in other countries talk about the opposing political parties. Um, people talk about their opponents a lot because it lets you know kind of what you're working with. I don't even want to use the words what you're fighting against because I, I really don't have a dog in the fight, so to speak. Um, mine is more about we're going to discuss crazy stories and things that people do that are poorly done. And then we're going to say, how does that relate to us and what can we learn from it? And I think a lot of times it's um, it's always good to, to take take what is happening in the world and find a crazy story that kind of proves your point. And I'm sure others can pull up stories that prove that disprove my points, but that's neither here or there. And so it's, it's, you can only do so many videos regarding like, here's a great way you can save and, and, and have finances. And here's a great way you can travel. And like, you could maybe do a dozen or two dozen videos about that, but you kind of run out of material. So what I try to do is I find interesting stories to bring up to you guys. And that way you can say, Hey, there's a, a lesson here. There's, there's a good takeaway. There's something that does kind of confirm the way I feel about the world. And this is the, I wanted to pull up these poll results here. So let me zoom in on this a little bit. Uh, this is a poll I did a month ago and I got 60,000 views. And I actually want to do a video on this, so I'm not going to dive down too deep into it. But I put the main reason I'm single is. Now, 33% of people said, I like doing my own thing whenever I want. That's not guys that are angry at women. That's not guys that are upset with women. That's not guys that necessarily uh, have any hate in their heart. They're just saying, you know what? I just, I'm selfish. I'm selfish with my time. Uh, I, I like doing my own thing. It's why I don't have kids. It's why I keep myself doing my own path because I just, I'm selfish with my time. And if I want to fiddle around building an old school bus into a, a my dream RV, um, and I put quotes around that because it's far from a dream. It's actually been a pain in the butt, um, but it's fun. And so the the one below that, no success in dating where I've given up, given up on finding someone, 20%. And again, that doesn't necessarily mean there's there's hate in there. Now, could that include some involuntarily involuntarily celibate guys? Yes, it could. Could they be angry about it? Yes, it, it could. But part of my message here to you guys is don't worry about it. Don't let other people's judgment of you affect who you are. That's why when haters want to hate on you, you go, okay, moving on, and you move on in your life. And it doesn't bother you, and it doesn't upset you, and it doesn't make you lose sleep. Same thing, whether it's if a woman doesn't care for you or if a guy doesn't care for you, if you're one of the lady viewers that watch, you just go on about your, your day and, and live your life as best you can. Another one, 16% uh, of people, I find very few people attractive nowadays, both physically and mentally. Okay, so people out there just maybe aren't meeting your your criteria. That's That happens too. I mean, um, there's not a whole lot to say about that. Like me personally, I like people that... That are a little bit more active. Uh, I, I'm not into the couch potato lifestyle. Other people are way into movies and video games and maybe just kind of hanging out and being casual. And they're all about like they're not into going to the gym and and trying different diets and fasting and trying a vegan versus 
keto versus paleo. Like that's my lifestyle. So maybe there's not somebody out there that's similar to that. Um, 10%, I've been hurt, burned too many times and lost trust. 10%. So everybody that comes on and says, oh, you guys are just a bunch of haters or you're losers and never had any luck. Uh, first of all, you're not a loser if you've never had any luck in dating. I don't care who you are. Um, you know, we're, a lot of people are not born with a genetic lottery. A lot of people maybe didn't have brothers or sisters and don't have, are very shy or, or introverted and are a able to talk to other people. You could fall into those classes of, of no success in dating or you've been hurt too many times um, and you lose trust. But again, only 10%. And this is the interesting one. Actually, I'm not single. I just like watching the channel. 21%. So there's 21% of you that are dating somebody or married to somebody or has a significant other. And you just say, hey, I like the crazy stories and the message that you send. And, and, and I appreciate that from all of you guys. So why do we talk about women well because number one i never said this channel is solely about men doing their own thing and going their own way i never said that i i, I speak to that very often because of most of the men um i think that are here probably do fall into that but there are a lot of people that say you know something um i i do want to date i do want to have a relationship someday it's not working for me is there something wrong with me is there something that i'm doing wrong am i a bad person um, and, and my big message to you is no, and I'm going to read you a bunch of crazy stories that show you that it's not just you and that a lot of people are, are, are struggling with this. Now there are other channels that are dedicated about, Hey, how can, um, how, here's how you can break out of your shell and meet people. And here's how you can date and here's how to properly text. And here's how to play game. That's just not my thing. That's why I don't cover it here. So, but the, the reason why we talk about women is because they're 50% of the population and they're in our workplaces and they're in our dating, many of your dating lives. And they're, they're the legislators that are making laws. They're in, uh, they're in a, a vast number of them are, uh, or I should say a large number of the journalists are women. And they are the, a lot of the ones that are writing stories that are kind of bashing on guys. And so I am going to talk about that. All right. So moving on, let's get to a couple of losses. And then we'll get to the main story. Um, this guy posted, uh, I asked a girl out for coffee at the food court at university. And she said, oh my gosh, this is the first time I've ever been asked like this, meaning person to person, I guess. She said, can you say that again so I can snap it? Snapchat maybe. Um, and I said, what, why? And she responded, so I can put it on my story. This is what you see on TV. She wanted me to pretend to come walking around the corner and ask her the same way so she can record it. I just told her no thanks and never mind and to have a nice day. I swear we live in the matrix. Yes, social media, your social media image of you and what the, how the world sees you is more relevant and more important than how you really are nowadays. Now, if I were this guy personally, I would have said, oh yeah, I can do that for you. And then I would have gone around the corner and then when I came back around and she was recording it, I would have walked right past her like she didn't even exist and I had no idea who she was. And then she would have just been filming a guy walking by. I think that would have been funny. Um, and last loss of the day here. Uh, ACS Confessions on, on Twitter. I lost the big V. I, I have my first body. I lost my virginity at 21. I'm 22 with a body count of nine. So in one year, she's had nine partners. She said, I'm still in love with my first body, but he treats me like a booty call. I don't like, I mean, I've used the term body count. Um, and that's just how many people you've actually been with. It seems very weird when you hear it like a post like this, right? My first body, the first body I ever had. Sounds like a, you're getting ready to put, grab a shovel and shovel and put somebody in the backyard and you added nine more to it. But she's still in for, she's still in love with the first guy that she was ever with, but she said he treats me like a booty call. Again, this is what happens when you date somebody that's really, you didn't secure the relationship before you secured the bedroom and she kind of is hating on it. But she was still with eight other partners after this while still being in love with this guy. This is not, this never improves your life. This never is gonna make you any happier. It's not gonna make you feel more accomplished. You're just, you're just, uh, I don't know, shuffling your problem down the road by filling it with uh, uh, feel good interactions, I guess. She said, so I effed all his boys as revenge. Then she said, he took it too far and effed my cousin and sent me, uh, sent spicy pictures of me to my brother. Okay, that's not cool. My family have disowned me and she's from Sheffield. Um, this is, this is dating now. And again, this is not all dating. This is not all dating. 
but more and more people are 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 turning up like this and it makes you know you can say well okay that's only 20 or 30 percent of women or 10 percent of women that are like this okay but when you take that 10 or 20 or 30 percent of women that are like this and then you take other ones that wouldn't date somebody on the opposite political aisle of them and 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 you add it all up it's it gets really tough to date let me tell you which is why again i talk about women and all these things saying look here's some crazy stories do your own thing don't worry about don't worry about it especially you younger guys when you get to be me when you get to be my age um you kind of been around the block a couple of times and you you get a good feeling of judging red flags as this somebody i actually want to spend time with and i think you can get a better feel for it but for you younger guys that are college age or just starting out in work it's it's against you even some of you guys just getting into the 30s it's against you because when nowadays it's it's easier to stay healthy it's easier to eat well if um and you you definitely do have more money as you age especially if you've been single you can save it and then a girl has a choice. You know, a, a 25-year-old girl has a choice. She can say, okay, I can date these 25-year-olds. They have no money. Maybe they're at university and all they want to do is kind of go out and party and hook up with me. Or I can go out with this guy that's a little bit older and he's got his life and he maybe has a house and he maybe has um, extra money to spend and he's not looking, he's not chasing every everything in a, in a skirt. And I feel like I feel like he'll actually appreciate me and date me longer term. I think that happens. So that's why my advice to you guys is just, you know, just get your get your life on track. Get used to being happy as a single man, making your money, get some friends, get some hobbies. And then as you age, you can always come back around into the dating world if you want to. All right. Main story. Why we stop liking a guy the second he returns interest. This boils down to the tingles. And... Um, I think a lot of it has to do with the chase. Now, men do this too. The difference is guys will usually chase not until they get the girl to like them. They'll usually chase until they get to sleep with a girl. And then a lot of times, once they start sleeping with them, they go, all right, yeah, I kind of been here, done that, tapping out. Or they'll say, I really don't like her personality, but she's cute and I kind of want to sleep with her anyway. And so they do it anyway. And this is problematic as well. I'm not giving you guys a pass on this one that, that, because uh, I think this still happens a lot too. But um, usually with the women, it's just knowing that they've caught you. So we're going to read down into this. is just from March 8th, March 8th, a couple days ago. Girl likes boy. Boy likes girl back. Never mind. Girl doesn't like boy anymore. What gives? Having a crush on someone is almost like a drug. It makes you giddy and nutty, warm and fuzzy, nervous and eager. We call that the tingles. Um, right, she can't keep her mind off you. Uh, it's almost an addictive feeling with the emotional highs and excitement we feel just after a simple act interaction, acting as our fuel for the rest of the day or week. If we're being honest, there's no doubt that having a crush is fun. We'd imagine the whole point of a crush is to get the object of our affection to like us back and eventually start a relationship, right? Well, oddly enough, it's not always. Have you ever suddenly and inexplicably stopped liking a guy the moment he returned interest? Turns out that's pretty common. Here's why we do that. Now, this is a, a, a woman writing this, um, and you guys know I like to... This is by uh, Kelia, Kelia Clarkson. I like reading these stories from women because then if people come at me and they go, dude, you, you're just this, this, this... Uh, look, I'm just reading... This is a woman's word. So I'm just reporting it to you and I'm agreeing with her. So if you're harshing on me, you're harshing on the woman writer. Shame on you. That is that is bad for you. Um, right. So it's as they say here, sometimes it's about the thrill of the chase. And I think this actor here, I think this was, uh, he says, the thrill of the chase, the blood pumping through your veins, just the two of us against the rest of the world. Um, I think this guy's name is, uh, what is it, a Bandersnatch Cucumber or a Cucumber Bandersnatch or something like that. Uh, Benedict uh, Cucumber. I don't know. Anyway, uh, they say we'd be lying if we didn't admit the huge part of why crushes are so exhilarating is due to the sense of mystery they provide us. We can't wait with bated breath to know what will happen next. Revel in the details when we can decode his texts or body language and daydream about accidentally bumping into him on the streets. It's thrilling to find ourselves in an unpredictable situation exploring uncharted territory with someone new to us. This is, those are the tingles, those are the butterflies. That's coming oftentimes from the bad boys, the boys. And when I say bad boys, I, I'm not picturing a guy riding around on a motorcycle with a leather jacket 
and you know a baseball bat with nails out of it you know hanging off his back like he's gonna take over the world here we're not talking mad max guy we're talking about the guy that really doesn't pay attention to the girls that he he doesn't show any interest in her um and when she talks or is nice to him he kind of blows her off he's very cold he's very distant it's because she says wow maybe he's attractive or maybe he's popular and he shows me no interest and um i've got i've got a little follow-up to this uh, that a, a woman actually explains it a little bit but anyway that's why they go over them. And the guys that come up to a girl and say, wow, you know something, you're so pretty and I really like you and you're really nice and you're really awesome and I'd like to be with you. To a woman that a lot of times that seems very try hard. If it seems like uh, she she feels like, oh, I'm being put on a pedestal. That means that I'm. he sees me as really great. So he, maybe he doesn't have a lot to offer. Maybe, maybe he's a little needy. Maybe, yeah, I'm not really feeling this. And, and the girls dip out. But what happens when they capture the bad boy? I've talked about this before, but we're gonna, this is what happens. But sometimes this ends up being only part of the relationship we enjoy. Our culture tends to emphasize the enchanting, riveting parts of love. We're encouraged to see relationships as only ever quenching our thir thirst for excitement and made to believe that our significant other should invariably make us happy when reality relationships aren't meant to be perpetually thrilling or dazzle us the way they did in the beginning. Relationships are supposed to mature along with the people in it. This is something I noticed um, in my longer term relationships, ones where I committed and I said, you know what, we're in this. I got your back. Hey, you know what? Anything, us versus the world, I got your back. Well, the minute you start doing that, woman's like, mm, all right, I guess. <laughs> oh, no more challenge, no more thrill. But, and and some of you guys that date and, and have casually dated, you know this as well. The women that you're not really interested in, the women that you're just kind of hanging out with and maybe having fun with and you're kind of keeping at arm's length and you don't dive head over heels for them, they seem to be the ones that are most interested in you. And there's a psychology behind this. It's again, if you keep yourself a little separated, a little aloof, um, a lot of times that can be attractive to women. And the same thing holds true the other way. Uh, not that if a woman's like crabby or mean or something like that, but if a girl kind of doesn't give a, a guy a time of day and I wish I could think of a good uh, a good example off the top of my head. But if a woman doesn't give a guy the time of day, a lot of times that guy will continue to chase her and try to win her affections and do nice things to kind of get her attention. The only difference is I don't think a lot of those guys are the ones that are leaving the girls behind. Because I think usually those guys get the girl and they're falling all over themselves to, to please the woman. I think it's more likely the guy that really doesn't care and he's just kind of using the girl as a hookup. Um, I think he genuinely doesn't care, but that keeps him exciting to the women, which again, we talk about the, the top 20, 30%. Okay. So they continue. Uh, let's see. Oh, and the other thing I want to talk about, right. The butterflies leave eventually as you learn more about somebody, as you learn who they are, as you learn the little annoying things they do, their bad habits, um, the various things that make, make them who they are. I think a lot of times you kind of go, mm, okay, maybe... What was up here, the way I was imagining this going, was actually a lot better than it is in real life. And I think um, that that's just that's just the nature of the beast. But today, because it's so easy to find other people for at least several several people that are dating, for a lot of people, they can find somebody else easily. So when the butterflies and the tingles go away, they go, oh, maybe I guess this isn't love. I guess I never really loved them. Um, maybe they're not right for me. So I'm going to go out and find somebody new. Or I'm going to go cheat on this person if I'm married. Or I'm, I'm going to do something to get those butterflies going with this other person instead of realizing that the butterflies go away naturally when you're in a relationship. You actually settle in. My parents have been married for 55 years. My grandparents were 60 or 65. Aunt and uncle, 45 or 50 years. They don't have butterflies anymore. Like they're just kind of... They're kind of in it. They've settled into their roles. They they understand each other, but they also have each other to rely upon and lean upon. And I think we're not getting there in relationships today. And this is, again, another reason why a lot of people say, uh, you know what, I'm really not into the dating thing anymore because it's not providing what I want. Uh, they continue on. We always wa want what we think we can't have. And this is uh, the Titanic and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, and I forget the actress's name. And uh, he says to her, what did you wish for? And she looks at him and says, something I can't have. Right, you can't have him. Uh, she says, or the uh, 
they, they continue on. Uh, I don't know about you, but every time I try to cut something out of my diet, I crave it like I never have before. It's an unfortunate side effect of being human to want something with a burning passion when we think we can't have it. And no, not because we're masochists and actually enjoy not having access to what we want. Much of the time, part of a crush's appeal is their beginning or is their being just out of reach. We tend to see the people who are harder to get as being of higher value and more worth our while than someone who's too available to us. We enjoy the rush of chasing after coveted goods. In every small interaction with this person brings us a sense of victory. The idealized version of him we've made up can come crashing down as soon as he starts showing interest back and we get a closer look at him. Everybody feels this in one way or another. And I'll challenge you guys with this. Now, I know a lot of you are overseas and you do not have your own vehicle. We here in the United States, we drive our own cars. When you're young and you're first getting ready to drive the car that your parents let you borrow or the first beat up car that you get, you wash it, you take care of it, you're excited, it's your baby. It's your ticket to freedom. For you younger people, it might be, um, hey, I really wanted the PlayStation 5 console or I really wanted a, a, a video card or a Corvette. I mean, it could be a million things. But once you get it and you own it for a while, that newness wears off, that, that excitement, that hard work. And the harder you worked for something, the more valuable it is. But after you've had it for a while, it loses its luster. It loses its amazingness. You know, if I look back at the first car I had, it was my father's. It was an old diesel dasher. And the thing had like 85 horsepower, 60 horsepower, something like that. And I've mentioned this in another video. It got, But it got great gas mileage, but it had like manual windows, had no air conditioning. It had an AM, FM radio, no tape deck, no CD player. This was long before that. You got to listen to FM radio. You had no air conditioning. The heater barely worked and it was slow, but it was really good on fuel. And it got me from place to place. Would I want to drive that vehicle again today? No. But the day that I got that, I was very excited. Same thing goes with most things. New relationships, that's when you're sleeping with each other the most, and that's where you're texting each other the most, and that's where you're calling each other the most. New anything. But after a while, it be, you get used to it, and now it's your new normal. That's why um, in longer-term relationships, the special things that a man does eventually are taken for granted. You know, the first time he takes you out to, to eat and on a date uh, is special. The first time he buys you flowers is special. But if every Friday or, or every month or something like that, he took you out to a great restaurant and he brought you flowers, eventually you're like, oh yeah, we go out once a month. He brings me flowers and we go out to eat. And yeah, it's a, it's a nice date. But that first time was very exciting. You get used to it. So what's happening here is again, the higher the value, the more worth our while. So if you're, if you're deemed as hard to get and you not necessarily play hard to get, but you're just not giving her attention, she may covet you. And then once she gets you, she goes, eh, okay, it's kind of it's kind of the new normal. It's not that exciting. Uh, she says, uh, we might not think we're good enough. And uh, raise your hand if you have seriously low self-esteem and constantly deal with the gnawing feeling that you don't deserve that job promotion, that incredibly good friend, or to have a wonderful doting boyfriend who loves you more than anything. When we don't see ourselves as being worthy of love, we might see someone who's willing to love us and assume there must be something wrong with them. Or, or think that if they really knew us, they'd run because no one could ever want to be with us, right? This can lead to a, a this can lead us to approach our romantic relationships with an avoidant attachment style, pushing away anyone who shows genuine interest and care in an attempt to save ourselves from heartbreak we think is inevitable. This is something I have per, personally firsthand experienced and personally firsthand done when I was younger. I did this to relationships where they were really nice and they were very sweet and I'd, I'd start getting feelings and then I would purposefully look for things that were going to eventually, maybe, possibly become a problem. And then I would mentally do gymnastics to try to find a way to make it work. I did this when I was younger. Now, have I gotten past it? Yes. Uh, at least I, I feel I have. I, you'd have to talk to some exes to really ask them. I feel I've gotten past this. Um, and now I tend to not start relationships unless um, I feel that it's going to go somewhere. And then when I start running into stumbling blocks, I will try to work through them until a point where you say, no more. I, I gave it a go. I'm out. But the the thing is, a lot of young people and younger people, maybe I can say it that way, 
um, really struggle with self-esteem. Look at look at social media today. Look at some of these stories that I read about the fails. These are people posting their very intimate, sometimes kind of sad, not very good stories on Twitter for the world to see, where anybody can see. That's social media. Look at people taking pictures of themselves and posting selfies a lot and saying like, oh, bad day. But in the meantime, they've got like a their chest hanging out and like a kissy duck face thing going, right? And they say, oh, having a bad day. Why? Because they want that attention. And if they don't get that attention, they don't get that validation and they don't feel like they have any self-worth. Now, this is going back again to what I said in the beginning of this video. This is why you cannot put your worth and your value in what other people think about you. This is something you have to cultivate for yourself because there was a point in my life where I wanted to be the guy that everybody liked. I really liked walking into a room and having people like me. So I didn't have any strong opinions about anything. I didn't fight back when somebody kind of put me down. I'd be like, oh, good one. And, and I kind of rolled with the punches. The problem is that that makes people very uncomfortable with you because they see you as disingenuous. It's better that somebody likes you or hates you than doesn't think about you at all. So in, in that meaning, you got to find out who you are. You got to stand up for yourself and you got to say, look, this is who I am. And if you don't like me, I don't care. This is, this is just me. And those type of people tend to do the best in life because it's not having a thick skin. It's, it's being, it's just being thick <laughs> all the way through is you're, you're forging yourself out of stone. You're a strong person. And there is no little thin layer on the top that if someone cracks through, they can really get under your skin. You can't get under your skin once you once you get to the right point. And I think that people are struggling with this today because whether it's parents that are not teaching them how to be strong and self-reliant and independent, whether it's schools not you know trying to talk about critical thinking and you shouldn't critically think and just go with the masses of what everybody says, um, I think this is a huge detriment to people and ultimately it will make them very pliable and weak and unhappy and unhappy. So I think that a lot of people, and in this case, she's talking about women. I think a lot of people uh, struggle with this today. And this is what I, this is a, a message that I try to throw at you guys all the time is don't listen to what other people say, including me, including me. If you disagree with me, great, awesome. I'm not saying I'm right. Uh, stick to your guns, but you still gotta you still gotta have those you still gotta be able to stick up for yourself and say this is who I am as a person and I don't think people do that today or they they do it the opposite and they fly off the handle and go crazy and get argumentative over something they don't even understand and again that's a that's a self defense mechanism because they don't like being called out because it makes them feel insecure or unknowledgeable and they're not happy about it call me out on something I'm like okay uh, she continues on it's possible we're afraid of commitment. Commitment isn't exactly popular with the younger generations. Oh, shocking. Marriage rates are declining as casual flings and no string to, strings attached agreements are glamorized. Our culture looks at total commitment as a sacrifice of our independence, happiness, and youth. We think of the single lifestyle where we can live only for ourselves as a far more fulfilling than giving up some of our freedom to be with someone long term. Uh, let me read the next paragraph and then I'll get back to this. Uh, it's not uncommon for us to be afraid uh, to commit to ourselves too seriously. When we're faced with the option of being less emotionally involved and by keeping someone at arm's length or jumping in headfirst, ready to give a relationship our all, we'll probably choose to keep ourselves safer by shutting down a budding relationship. Now, many of you guys know, and I talk about this a lot on this channel, we don't do long-term relationships. We don't uh, do... Um, cohabitation and we don't have kids and we don't get married. At least that's that's what I've talked about. W what do those four things all have in common? Well, usually when you're together with someone a long time, um, depending on the country you live in, if you live with somebody, if you're married to them, if you have kids, you've now gotten the state involved. You've gotten the government involved in your relationship. That ends poorly for the vast, vast majority of men. But am I against somebody... Be, and, and this is something else somebody said to me. They're like, oh, well, you talk about securing the relationship before you secure the bedroom, but then you talk about don't have long-term relationships. I'm not against, first of all, first of all, if you want to casually, you know, casually hook up with people, go ahead. I'm, I'm fine with it. I have nothing against that. I'm not going to hold that against anybody. 
but make sure both parties are in agreement as to that relationship. Don't be the one that's like, oh, I'm falling in love. And the other person's like, no, this is casual. Remember we had that talk. I've had that relationship. I've had that happen to me where we both agreed it was going to be casual. And it was casual for nine months. That's kind of a long-term casual relationship. Monogamous, we were just with each other. But when she's like, you know what? I really have feelings for you and, and I really care about you and I love you. And can we make this like more? And my answer was, no, I, I don't do that. She got angry at me and I, look, you can be angry with me if you want, but we had this conversation. My opinion hasn't changed. I felt bad for her, but I made it clear how I, th I thought. And at least I could walk away saying, I didn't lie. I didn't manipulate. You know, I'm sorry she felt like that, but I'm not the bad guy here. Um, so I don't have anything against long-term relationships. I don't have anything against the hookup culture, but here's the thing. You pay a price for all of it. You know, if you do the hookup culture over and over and over again, you're going to burn out some receptors. You may not be able to fall in love after that. You may not be comfortable in a long-term relationship because you're used to new and exciting. And there's that challenge when you do the hookup thing. Um, you may not be able to pair bond with somebody. And if you get into a long-term relationship, a lot of people feel they're wasting their time if it's not going somewhere. Now, where does that going somewhere mean? For women, it usually means marriage. It might mean kids. For guys, it might mean the same thing. For a lot of guys, um, I think a lot of men would just be happy with a long-term relationship. If they're like, hey, I like everything just the way it is forever. Like, I'm good with that. Women tend not to like that. Um, so anyway, today's culture does not like does not like settling. They do not like changing. They do not like they don't, or they, let me correct that. It's not that they don't like changing. They don't like things staying the same and they do like change and they do like the excitement because everything, you know, with your phone, everything in the world today is at the tip of your fingers and the internet. And I can look at memes and then when I get bored, I'll listen to music and then I can download a movie whenever I want. And then I can get on uh, Tinder and swipe away. And then I can, your, your, everything in the world is being piled on you. You, it's information overload. A lot of times when all that goes away and you just quietly sit somewhere, no music, just sitting somewhere watching a sunset, listening crickets chirp in the background, maybe sitting there for an hour or two trying to teach yourself how to play guitar, people get bored. People get bored with that. And now they're getting bored with just a, that's that's my girlfriend and that's my boyfriend, same person they've been. Eh, it's kind of boring. I, th I, that's, this, that's what the information overload is doing, I think. Uh, she says... Um, it's not uncommon for us to commit to ourselves. I already read that. Closing thoughts. We aren't all afraid of commitment or more interested in the thrill of the chase. There are countless reasons that we might stop liking a guy the moment he likes us back. But if that's been a theme in our life, it's worth looking into, understanding, and confronting. Um, yeah, I think, I, I just think that today, um, women and maybe young men too, I can't speak to this because I'm not a young man anymore but I can speak to a lot of the stories that I've read and women that I've actually talked to that say, uh, I like the thrill. I like the butterflies. I, I don't want to get bored. I've had ex-girlfriends tell me that. Um, here on uh, Lipstick Alley, which is, I guess, a thread, uh, it's a forums, and I happened to, to do this search and I came up with this. Then it says, why do some women go after a man that doesn't want them? Um, and this was posted January uh, 19th of 2021. So this is only a thread that's a month old here. And a woman says, so why do women go after men that don't want them? And here's the top response. I'm going to read the top five or eight. I myself have done this and I honestly don't know why I did. Instead of looking for the man who actually wants me, I was chasing a man who clearly didn't. Unobtainable, high value. Maybe he was, again, um, a few... Uh, a little bit higher socially valuable than she is. Another gal says, I can't relate. I'm way too afraid of rejection to chase somebody who clearly doesn't want me. I do often find myself wanting men I can't have or who don't want me though. I guess the cake you can't have always seems to be the sweetest. And again, and again, these are just relating back to the story I just read. Uh, another one, for the same reasons we pursue any relationship with someone who doesn't show an interest, i.e. romantic partner, friendship, etc., etc. It's the thrill of the chase, low self-esteem, just plain old loneliness or etc. Now, these are these are just girls, women talking on a forum here, re-verifying what, what uh, Evie Magazine just said in the article. 
Here's another one. Because people want what they can't have. Also, in some people's minds, people who are harder to obtain are of higher value. Right there it is. Another, I've done it before, sadly. I sometimes think we just... Uh, some, I think sometimes we just think that we all have these good qualities that the person isn't necessarily seeing. And if we just stick it out a bit longer, they will magically see we are the person for them. When in hindsight, none of that even matters. They just don't like you or they just like you or you don't. Right. Chasing somebody. And again, here's the downside. A lot of guys will will sleep with this woman. A lot of guys will still go there and say, well... I get I get the bedroom fun. I get to hook up with them, and I don't really have to promise myself to them. And the woman's thinking, "Wow, maybe he likes me. Like we're hanging out and we're kind of sleeping together. So maybe if I just hang in there long enough, he'll start seeing things about me that he likes." And then he doesn't, and then they're angry. Another one. Everyone is on different timelines. You've been there, done that. While other women haven't yet. I have a friend who's now more concerned with the things a guy says to her rather than his actions, and I'm running the f out of advice. I'll always be there for her and support her, but she has to learn the hard way like I did. So right, guy's saying sweet words to her to kind of keep her around, but he's treating her like crap, and she does. Another one, they like the chase apparently and probably have a lot of masculine energy. Everybody has done this before, but when you know better, you do it better. Chasing after a man and trying to entice him to be interested is not the business and will get your feelings hurt. And the last one here, usually that's where the tingles comes from. You see a guy and he's your type or you get to know someone at work, etc., and then you get to like them. The problem is when we get the tingles, he barely notices us or doesn't want the same thing. Right. Or I'll add on the end of that, or you finally do get to know him and you're like, ah, he, he didn't turn out to be as great as I wanted. So there you have it. Um, you know, I, there's an article about it and there's some real forum backup here that just basically says, you know, uh, that... And I think men are guilty of this too, but it's a lot more women that seem to be really into a guy. And and I've gotten these messages from you guys too, where it's like, hey, I was into this girl. She was really into me. We were talking, we we're hanging out. And things started to finally bloom. Boom, she was gone and she bailed. I've heard it too. All right, now it is time for our dating profiles of the day. All right, first one. I'm only going to do one tonight because it's a longer one. This is uh, looks like from Facebook um, or maybe Instagram. I don't know. I don't do enough on social media to know. Uh, but it, pro it reminds me a little bit of Facebook, uh, the dating thing there. It says, boop, hi there. Things that are useless to me and men. Decorating skills. Cooking skills. A puppy. Compliments. Sarcasm. Bragging about your uh, bedroom exploits in an attempt to impress me. Tell me that you used to date a stripper one time or that you want to hear all about dancing. Okay, so uh, you can be a good cook. It doesn't matter to her. Um, you can have a puppy, I guess. Uh, compliments don't work on her. Sarcasm doesn't. You can't brag to her. Um, and that you want to hear all about dancing. Maybe she's a dancer. So I guess showing interest in, uh, in her interests, maybe that doesn't uh, work so well for her. But her turn-ons, number one, money. <laughs> Shocking. She's turned on by your money. Now, I don't know if that means you just having it as a turn-on or you spending it on her as a turn-on. I'm going to guess it's probably you spending it on her. Intellectual conversations like engineering and psychology. Okay, humor. All right, chivalry. Effing simple, right? But it's all mandatory. So her turn-ons are mandatory, so you must be giving her these things. So if you don't have chivalry or money or humor, you're out. That's mandatory. Obviously, I want you to see me in real life to make sure I am who I am first, but... I'm pretty much a dream girl with no baggage. So cash gifts are mandatory in a relationship for me, even in the beginning. One of the worst deals ever made of <laughs> any kind signed by anybody. Wow. Basically, she rolled that red flag around a baseball bat and hit you right in the head with it. Uh, so you got to come with cash and prizes, uh, even just to meet her in the beginning. <laughs> good, good Lord. Don't ask me what or how much. That's dumb. Food and housing doesn't count. <laughs> so if if you give her food and housing, that doesn't count towards the money that you're giving her, apparently. And don't ask her what her requirements are, because that's dumb. You should just know. 
She says, are you okay with this condition? Thanks. Uh, frankly, no. No. Um, and here's the thing. If a guy is okay with this, he's a loser. You're getting yourself a loser. So basically what you're doing is weeding out every man that is of quality or of value. And you're guaranteeing the only people you're going to talk to are losers. And in the, in the end, she's going to say, didn't they read this profile? Like, how, how did they not understand? Uh, she says, if you have kids, our, our, our Polly, looking for casual, not in shape, over 45, have debt, please consider the fact that I work in clubs and ask me about that instead. Thanks. I have, I have no idea what that means. I guess she's saying, like, if you have any of these negative things, I work in a club. So obviously, I... I'm a catch, or I am beautiful, or I, I got something up. Uh, no judgment on what you personally want. This is just the easiest way for me to sift through matches here. So no judgment on you if you can't meet all of her red flags. No judgment. Just don't bother messaging. I have so many to weed through on here that I have to narrow it down. Sorry, gentlemen. So come with cash prizes. <laughs> There's a list over on the left please form an orderly queue uh guys here's here's the thing um i'm not against long-term relationships i'm not against the hookup culture you do you i've always said that you guys do you but all of them come with penalties all of them have downsides all of them have their own caveats and one of the big ones it seems today is that if somebody likes you apparently in many cases, if you actually show them interest, they get disinterested. It's just one more needle in that needle stack of things you need to kind of crawl through that's painful trying to find somebody. Not to say that you can't, not to say that you won't. Every once in a while, uh, you can find a, a specific needle and another and another needle. Those two needles can bump into each other in that needle stack. Um, but it's going to be painful and it's going to be hard. Or you can just, you know, be a top 5%er and plow through the needle stack like a magnet and all the needles cling to it and it gets its choice and that's just how it goes. Uh, guys, if you'd like to support my work, links are below as always. If you have, thank you very much. Best way to support me is like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, likes, comments, do it. Helps the algorithms and subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed and some of you have been subscribed and have been magically unsubscribed by Mama YouTube. So we know how that goes. Guys, I'll leave it there. This is Better Bachelor. I'm Joker. And remember... Uh, Again, it's it's not necessarily you. Get in a good place with yourself. If she shows you interest, you show interest back and she ghosts on you. Who cares? Um, that just probably means she has some low self-esteem. Or maybe you have a quality that she didn't realize and then she does realize and doesn't like it. Who cares? Move on.